Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, November 17. Further adjustments have been made to the COVID-19 containment measures to relax certain restrictions. They were announced by Prime Minister Andrew Holness in Parliament yesterday and will take effect on Thursday, November 18. Among them is the one-hour extension of the nightly curfew to 9 p.m. Gathering for places of worship, weddings and annual general meetings have been increased by 50 to allow a maximum of 100 persons. This, however, is subject to the size of the building. Events hosted by public bodies will remain at 50 for fully vaccinated persons. Burials and funerals can now accommodate 20 persons. However, the public gathering limit is still 10 persons. With the cooperation of our citizens, we have been successful in controlling our third wave and our numbers have remained relatively stable over the three weeks since I announced the current set of measures. However, as we have seen in other countries and from our experience, there is no room for complacency. If we let down our guard, we could easily see a reversal of this trend. Controlled entry protocols have also been recrafted. A negative PCR or antigen test is still required for travel to the island. Fully vaccinated travelers with a negative PCR test will not be required to quarantine, but those with a negative antigen test and who have been fully vaccinated must quarantine for eight days. Unvaccinated travelers with a negative PCR or antigen test are required to quarantine for 14 days. So just, just to be clear, if you, didn't take the, if you didn't take a PCR test as your pre-entry test, then when you come to Jamaica, you are under the quarantine rule. So if you are unvaccinated, you have to spend 14 days. If you are vaccinated, right, you can take the PCR test and be released. Or if you don't take the PCR test, you would have to wait eight days. In the meantime, Prime Minister Andrew Holness says Jamaica has put measures in place to control a possible fourth wave of COVID-19. Mr. Holness says he anticipates a possible increase in cases after the Christmas period, as well as the likelihood of outbreaks in other parts of the world reaching our shores. He is therefore urging persons to practice the COVID-19 prevention control measures and get vaccinated. Whether or not we experience a fourth wave and how significant it may be depends on us. The only sustainable way out of this pandemic is personal responsibility on the part of all our citizens. Personal responsibility to follow the infection prevention and control protocols, wearing your mask, sanitizing, social distancing, and ultimately the personal responsibility for taking the vaccine. Up to midday on Tuesday, a total of 1,054,653 doses of vaccines were administered on the island. From that, 481,900, or approximately 17.1% of the eligible population, are fully vaccinated. In addition, 19% of the student population is now fully vaccinated, with numbers as of November 12 showing 109,778. Still on vaccination, the Ministry of Health and Wellness is now offering both first and second doses of the Pfizer vaccine to Jamaicans 50 years and older. It was previously limited to children and adults who were awaiting their second dose from the first shipment into the country. Persons must make an appointment to receive their first or second dose of Pfizer. Appointments can be made on the Ministry of Health's website, moh.gov.jm, or by calling the National Vaccination Call Center at 888-1-LOVE. That's 888-663-5683. Persons should take a government-issued identification, school ID for students, or letter from a justice of the peace. Those going for their second dose will also need to bring their vaccination cards to the appointment. In addition to Pfizer for those over 50, the Ministry of Health continues to administer the AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson vaccines to persons 18 years and older. Come January 2022, the Ministry of Health will begin filing civil suits against the families of persons who have been abandoned at health facilities. Portfolio Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton made the disclosure during a recent sitting of the House of Representatives. It is unfair for persons who need a hospital bed and cannot get one because it is occupied for for multiple years by persons who would have been released but have nowhere to go. 
I believe that the state has to maintain compassion for those persons because they are victims. But we should not confuse the compassion we show uh, to those persons um, by extending it to the family members who exploit those persons' situations. According to Dr. Tufton, there are currently 174 social cases in hospitals across the island. He says case management probes reveal that families identified for these individuals can support the care and treatment of the social cases but have refused to assist. We know of cases of persons who are receiving pension from overseas but relatives have refused to use these funds to support their relatives in hospital or indeed in other care. We know of instances where persons have been abandoned in hospital and relatives have rented their properties and refused to use these resources to care for the owners of the property. Dr. Tufton says family members will first be engaged in dialogue and legal action taken if necessary. The productivity and efficiency of 265 government and quasi-government institutions are expected to be bolstered with the infusion of Geographic Information Systems GIS technology. This as the National Spatial Management Division has secured a new licensing agreement with the Environmental System Research Institute, ESRI. The agreement will provide GIS resources to the institutions, including 179 educational entities. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Housing, Urban Renewal, Environment and Climate Change, Dr. Alwyn Hales, made the announcement during the 11th GIS Business Executive Forum 2021 recently. Dr. Hales says GIS and geospatial information management are critical to Jamaica achieving its Vision 2030 National Development Plan. These technologies are critical to the day-to-day -day deliverables of a wide cross-section of ministries, departments and agencies of the government of Jamaica. GIS technology is used by planners, business persons, academia, policy makers across our island and indeed around the world. Geospatial information dictates where we build, how we build, where we put necessary infrastructure to capitalize on, and manage our resources. The forum forms part of GIS Awareness Week being held under the theme Geospatial Technologies Navigating the New Normal. And finally, Jamaica's economic recovery from the disruption of the COVID-19 pandemic is expected to speed up with the staging of the Explore Do Business Jamaica Virtual Conference. The Jamaica Promotions Corporation, JAMPRO, is hosting the two-day conference today and tomorrow. At a recent JIS think tank, JAMPRO's Vice President of Marketing, Gabriel Heron, said the conference was organized to stimulate global interest in a wide range of sectors. Agribusiness, energy, infrastructure, logistics, tourism, cannabis, manufacturing, and of course, the creative industries. It will, it, it, it will engage, it will entail over 30 sessions, discussions, panel discussions, success stories, investor pitches. So it will really range um, to allow investors and potential participants, attendees, a more immersive and engaging experience. It is a virtual experience. As part of the conference, participants will access a virtual interactive business event portal for a segment dubbed Jamaica Experience. Persons may get on board by logging on to explore.dobusinessjamaica.com. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.